a special time where our country is going through to bring direction, to bring peace, to counsel, and to exhort, amen, to straighten our path. First Kings, we read it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Church of Christ says, amen, it says. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon and arose and went and caught hold of the horns of the altar. We come before you, Lord, your throne of grace, your presence. I ask you to take bread from the word and to feed our spirits and give us life. Lord, I ask you, may the eyes of our understanding be lightened by the power of the word. I ask you today the your sweet presence of the holy spirit come over all the per people who are here may your word bring sanity restoration may it all also bring reform and i ask you lord may your word break arguments paradigm and take your people to a new level in life in the name of jesus father we bless you jesus we bless you holy spirit we take captive our thoughts to your obedience. We sit in places of authority with Christ in Christ and we minister and we speak through Christ in the name of Jesus, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. The message that we're going to be letting go of today, it's a key message to take hold of the of the horns of the altar it's time to take hold of the horns of the altar of god it's important in these times to understand that the church needs to recover the people of god need to recover the authority that has they have lost you can have a, a, successes and not authority we for example see the king Acab. he had a, he had a lot of 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 things but he didn't have the authority he wasn't using the authority that god gave him as he needed to use it that authority was being was being misused but today this message that the Holy Spirit brings to you is to return the authority that the devil wanted to steal from you. The word authority is a Greek word, eusosia. The word authority means someone who's clothed in power. I always put this practical Example, for example, a policeman out there, you respect him because he has a uniform. You respect him. Why? Because he has an identity that he's an authority, he, a judge, a person that's common like you and like me. But you cannot say you to uh, a, a judge. You have to say Mr. Judge because he's clothed with an authority and the church of christ is a church it's apostolic in the book of acts we see really a church that had an authority and that restoration is what's coming over the people of god in these end times we need to go back and to recover the authority that the devil had stolen. But for that, we need to go up in the revelation, in the revelation, repeat, of the word of God. 
the church of Christ. It's the head, the visible head of Christ here on earth. Jesus said that all of their authority is given to me in the heavens, on earth and under earth. And there Paul, in the, in the letter of Ephesians, is that, said that the authority of Jesus Christ wasn't given as a tail but as a head of all things to the church. Amen. If we can understand this, my loved ones, we're going to start moving in another level, in another dimension. Jesus said that by the finger of God, if I cast out the demons, then the kingdom of, of God has reached you. The finger of God is the index finger, is the finger of the prophet. This is the time that you need to be lifted in the name of Jesus and lift the, the finger of God. And by the finger of God, you need to start using that authority. And not only speak of authority, but you have to be under authority. Amen. And the way of, of recovering that authority that the devil has taken from us, because the, one of the functions of the enemy is to steal. One of the bad actions is to steal. How many head of the fathers, how many governments, how many people who are foreigners has the enemy stolen the authority? But we give glory to God, eternal God, because he has sent his son, his only son, for all those who believe in him don't get lost and have eternal life. And that authority in Christ we recover. That's why this message is key for your life today. Today you're going to go to the design, to the original design of God. You need to take hold of the horns of the altar. Take hold of the altar, of the horns of the altar of God. In Joel 2.28, the word says that in these end times, the Lord is going to pour of his Holy Spirit over, over all f flesh. And the signs that the Holy Spirit is going to pour over all flesh is that we will have dreams and we will have visions. Amen. When the Sp Holy Spirit poured in the Pentecostal day over the 120 there in Acts 2, their lives changed radically. Those people not only spoke in tongues in that moment, but they were activated in the spiritual world. They were activated by the power of God. We see, for example, a Philip that wasn't any longer a natural person, and he converted in a man of a spirit. Philip heard the direction of the angels, the voice of the Holy Spirit, he was the man of word. He was the man of a spirit, a man that was restored by God in all authority of kingdom. And that's what God is going to do with you today with you, to his name. Say, I'm going to say, I'm going to recover that authority that the devil has stolen. But he's an expert to create conflicts, to create problems, to want to put the banana peel for you to slip. He's an expert in sending you a dart of death to make you sick and to block you in your purpose for you not to recover that authority. That's called Hasatan. We don't have to underestimate our enemy. Our enemy is also powerful. The church needs to understand that we're fighting against powers. There in Ephesians 6, it says that our fight isn't against the flesh. It's not against human beings, against principalities, powers, and wickedness, government of the darkness in the heavenly places, diabolic spirits that govern in the seven second skies here in the first skies and under the earth and they have legal authority because 
According to the scripture, Satan is the prince of this world. So we are encountering not against a small devil, it's a superior being. And the church needs to recover, say, the weapons of war. And one of the weapons that you're going to recover for me is one of the most powerful. It's to take hold of the horns of the altar. Go back to the altar of God. How do you want to face in a spiritual world to Satan, to the demons? And you have a, a, a life of prayer that's, that's not a lot. That's, that changes a lot. No, my loved ones, you need to go back to the, the original design of God. On day, on the afternoon, at night, it's a constant life of prayer. The prayer, my loved ones, makes our perception be clear. We need to have the discernment of spirit in, to remove that authority up to the enemy that he has stolen. Now the the conflict in the first of Kings 150 is the conflict that's political. It's a bit of army strength, spiritual, religious powers. And we also see here a mixture of pol political And evidently, it's, it seems that Satan was there. The atmosphere in the times of David here were bad. David was the king of Israel. The nation was going through a transition. David was old. David had an old age. He couldn't stand alone. The, the time of of being older had come to him and he was in a tr transition of leaving the kingdom and going with the Lord and there the enemy came and he wanted to create a conflict because the enemy searches for a place times of wickedness times of, of weakness because he wants to attack in those moments because when you know David he had three children but the most important things of the children of David was Solomon Adonias and Absalom now we see here in this text that Adonias was the the youngest son of David he was the youngest Or the one from the middle, from the middle, Adonijah. We see here that this man, he started to move in, in an unjust way. But we see, we saw chapter 50 that Adonijah went to, to take hold of the horns of the altar. We're going to reach that. We see here that Adonijah was going through a situation of persecution that he he found himself because Adonijah he took hold of the weakness of his father and with other counselors of Dave of David he started to start a conspiracy that's secret and he started to auto proclaim king of israel something that was so so be, and because and the successor was going to be solomon now the king solomon gave And Solomon was going to inherit the kingdom. But this son, Adonia, 
he took hold of the moment of weakness. He went and started with five, 50 men and people a, a political campaign to proclaim himself king, to auto-proclaim himself king of the nation. And a priest also followed him and a general of the, of the troop of, of David called Huas. So, in that moment, seeing the prophet Nathan, seeing other priests, seeing other generals of David, that Adonai was rebelling himself against what God had spoken that Solomon was going to be the king, then he went to the king of David, like in those times, you cannot go near a, a king. He went, first Betsabe went, and Betsabe told the king, My Lord, you have said that Solomon would be the king. And David had that conscience to anoint Solomon as a king. But he didn't know that in secret, the other, the other, Bro the other brother was committing that thing and then the king called the general and then the prophet Nathan came to confront David but the thing that David had was that he feared the voice of God and what caught the attention of this supposedly government that wanted to go against I do not, uh, he didn't have prophets, he had priests, but he didn't have prophets. And a people that don't have prophets doesn't have direction, it lasts shortly because the prophetic directs you, he, it indicates, say with me, it encourages you, it empowers you, and it indicates what God is going to do with you and with your house and your nation to his name. But there was no prophets. There wasn't any prophets. So the prophet Nathan went to David. And something that the prophet Nathan didn't have with David was filters. Remember, Nathan was the prophet that prophesied greatly from God when, when he fell in sin. When David fell in sin, so the prophet Nathan went and spoke to David. King, how is this? This is your your business. This is your business that out that Adonai proclaimed himself a king. And David said, No, prophet, no. I chose and 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 the Lord and you spoke that the king had to be Solomon. So David gave the order the royal decree and you're going to go and take the priests and you're going to take a group of generals you're going to go to Solomon over my mule and you're going to take him to Zion and you're going to anoint him as king amen and when the prophets and the government anointed the un unction and all the troops of God started to move with Solomon because the scripture said that it started to the sound of chariots, sounds, stadium sounds. How many of you say amen to his name? And it's the word says that the unction came over Solomon. And when he heard, when Adonai heard it, say with me, when Adonai heard it, he under, Adonai understood that Solomon was anointed as king and what he, what he was doing was illegal and what was he was doing was rebelling against his father. He, Adonai understood what he was doing. He did under, from outside of legalness of God. He understood and says he went out running and say, he came out running, fearing Solomon of the new king. 
Now, death awaits me. I was sentenced to death. That was the mentality of Adonaya. And running, he went out. And it said, he took hold of the horns of the altar, running for his life, running from Solomon, the scripture says, and Adonaya, fe fearing of the presence of Solomon, he went and took hold of the horns of the altar. Because the one, because the one that was going to, the, the horns of the altar, I'm going to explain afterwards where specifically was the horns of the altar. Adonai went and took the horns of the altar. All the people who were, who were guilty, all the people who were sentenced to death for two things, to be condemned or to, or to appeal to God and the, or the king that was there, mercy. And we see, because David was alive, David was also a father. David forgave his son Adonai his life. But after David died, Solomon was in charge of ending the life of Adonai. Why? Because the man didn't have a, re a, a real repentance. As you know, the king was, was old. And it says that David, the King David, took a Sunamite to be her, his wife. And when David died, it says that the scripture, that Adonai went near Bethsabe and he said, I want to ask you something. And Betsaba say, do you come for peace? In peace? No, but I want to tell you, I want to ask you something. Go and speak to the King Solomon to give the, the wife of, of David for me. The man was in love of the wife of his father. That was sin. That's immoral. That was perverse. So because of that, Solomon removed the decree of death over Adonai. And when we see the scripture, 1 of Kings 2.28, let's go because I'm making a prophetic chart. Because and we're going to let go 1 of Kings 2.28, we're going to see 28. And so on. Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adonai, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. What did Joab do? He went and caught hold of the horns of the altar. Because David died. He was with the Lord. David forgave him, but Solomon wasn't going to forgive his life. And so a decree came out. Adonai, because he, wa he wanted to take the, the wife of my father, sentence. And Tuab, you're go going to be fled to death. And Solomon went and took hold of the horns. What does that represent to get to catch hold of the horns? It's a sentence of death. When someone was found guilty and it was a type of a less resource to appeal to to mercy and the holds of the horns of the altar. Now I'm going to explain a bit where these horns of the altar were located because it's important to understand that all truth is parallel and God speaks figure in a figurative way in these end times. But in the old pact, we see that God speaks in a prophetic way and he moved in a prophetic way up to the point that he told Moses, you're going to construct a tabernacle 
in a figurative sense that's going to be a sign. This tabernacle is going to be a sign of what it is, what a, a, the tabernacle of the heavens is. And this tabernacle, the first part, where in the first block, we see two elements. The first element, we see the altar of bronze, say, the bronze altar. In this altar of bronze, we see in each point, in each, we have four horns. In that bronze altar, the sacrifice was low. It was the sacrifice took place to each year to represent God to for forgiveness to come over the people of God and because without sacrifice without pouring of blood there wasn't forgiveness of sins now in this first block was the altar of bronze and was there was your you will need to wash your hands if you want to go to another level. Bless is his name. Because the priest, if he wanted to enter to another level in the tabernacle of the holy place, he needed to wash his hands. This comes from the Spirit now. And I tell many people and people who are watching me through the internet, God is going to take you to another, a cleaning of your hands. Because he wants to take you to another level. How many of you worship his name? And, and now, by going in that second block, we see three elements. In a, on, we have the bread. And the other side, we have the candlesticks of seven tubes. That's the menorah. That we see here, we also relate it to the the Church of Christ we have then we have the altar of the incense repeat the prayer the altar of the incense now there's another prophetic word here say with me washing my hands sanctifying my, myself and reaching the altar of the incense of the prayer say prayer Ma gives me access to the third block to the holy place where the Ark of the Pact was. And it says that the Ark was completely made of gold and they had cherubs and there was three, and there was the stick of Aaron, the table of the laws and the mana, the bread. And we see here what the tabernacle was. Amen. Now we're gonna go to the first block. In those first block, we see the bronze altar and in that altar of bronze were the the horns on the four sides in the four points now what's interesting is that the victim or the animal or the lamb that was going to be sacrificed needed to be tied to the horns of the altar there is where we see the term that he caught hold of the horns of the altar. We're going to ca catch hold of the victims on the altar. That's where the term says, catch hold on the horns of the altar. Say the Lord, the Lord tells me to tie myself to the horns of the altar. Why? Because the animal didn't want to die. The animal, when he was put over the altar, needed, they had these reactions to escape because he didn't want to die. So they needed to tie it for them not to escape because he needed to die. I come to prophesy from, the whole, from God that you're not going to escape. You're going to be stuck. You're going to be tied to the horns of the altar until you need to die. You need to die what you need to die. To his name. Give a great round of applause. Now, what's interesting is that it was tied. I remembered when I was a child. 
in front of the, my father's house, I saw a, a man, the neighbor was Don Julio, Mr. Julio and Miss Mirta. These two men, they had a place where they killed pigs. This marriage had a place where they killed pigs. And I woke up every morning, you know how, you want, you want to know how, with the sound of the pig going to the altar to being assassinated. Each morning, Mr. Julio and Miss Mirta tied a pig. And you don't know how the pig started to cry. The one who knows about this to kill a pig or a cow will understand. And then that was, that was my clock, my alarm clock to go to school. And the Lord brought me memories of this. And that's what, what the victim felt that was in the altar, the lamb. He, he gave a shout of, because he know, knew that he was going to go to death. Now, why four horns? Because four represents a lamb. It means the creator of the universe, the four seasons of the year, the four living creatures, the four gospels. Amen. The four horns represent that we were created by dust and we're going to dust again. You were born a day, but you will have to die. Amen. Say with me, the horns, the horns of the altar represent the death itself. Now, if we go to Exodus 21, 14. Exodus 21, 14, the word of God says. We're going to read it from 12. And he... He that smitheth the man so that he die shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hands, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptively upon his neighbor to slay him with jailly, thou shalt take him from mine altar altar that he may die amen to the word here we're seeing laws that god has given to moses be, of uh, regarding to crimes someone that suddenly killed at, as a personal defense that meant that god put in his hands that he, god put himself in his hands and and killed them in a personal defense. So God prepared a place, you can study that later, the city of refuge for people who killed by personal defense, say cities of refuge. Now people who committed a homicide, a homicide and wanted to go to look for mercy taking hold of the horns he says that he got removed them from the altar and they killed them in the streets because it was a crime because it was a great crime now why am i give you giving you this prophetic map because adoniah And also Huas, they needed, they were guilty and they needed to go through death. 
Imagine that. In those times, there wasn't any problems. A king didn't have problems to assassin his child if he sinned. Up to that point of severe was the law. And we see here that Adoniah and Huas were guilty, were guilty people. Huas killed two people that David appreciated to Abner and other another man without consulting David. Adoniah auto-proclaimed himself king and he wanted to take the woman of his father. They needed, they were guilty. They needed to die. That is why they were removed from the horns of the altar and assassined. Because they were worthy of even grabbing themselves from the horns of the altar. Where do I want to go? Repeat, Jesus Christ, he being the, the lamb, the one who removes the sins. Jesus Christ being a lamb without stains. He didn't commit any sin. He didn't know sin. Being him a person, the most holy and pure person, most innocent person, he needed to go to the horns of the altar to die as a criminal. And and he didn't refuse to die, but he was tied by the horns of, at the horns of the altar, and he was died for you and for me. You know what that place? That place was for you and for me because we were found guilty before the throne of of God because of our sins. That is why we need to value the work of Jesus Christ at the cross of the Calvary because. He voluntarily presented as a victim and he took hold of the of the altar, the horns of the altar, and he wasn't guilty to his name. And he poured his blood for us, for us to have life, for us to have, to proclaim what Revelation says, 12, 11, and they have overcome. It speaks of the church because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. If, if we are victorious, it's thanks to God. It's thanks to Christ. If we're prosperous, thanks to Christ. If God, if God lifts us, it's thanks to Christ. To his name, glory. It's thank you. To, from to Jesus I give all this prophetic chart for you to understand how how serious how serious it was to go to get hold of the horns of the altar the criminals went there the guilty people if we see with Matthew 28 says Matthew 20, 28, eight, the word of God says. Matthew 20, 20, 28, eight says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom of for many. Amen. My loved ones, we need to try to be like Jesus. We need to wish to be like Jesus. We need to try servants as Christ be like him because we have a high demand, but we don't have. We ask for a lot, but we don't want to serve, set our life to serve, to be like Christ. Amen. In 2nd of Corinthians, chapter 5, 12, 21, the word of God says. 2nd Corinthians 5, 21. 
the one who did, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that he, we, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. John the Baptist saw Jesus in this. John 1, 29, the Lamb of God that removes the sin of the world comes before us. Amen. In Isaiah 53, let's, let's open these texts. In Isaiah chapter 53, come my loved ones, open, opening the Bible is a sacrifice, but it takes you to another level. Isaiah 53, chapter 5, and so on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slayer, and as a sheep before her shares is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Amen to the word. This message that need, needs to take you to value the work of, of Jesus at the cross of Calvary. Now, the great question of many is, it means that Christ, pastor, went to the horns of the altar, and now we don't need to do anything any longer. Christ prayed the whole price. We don't have to do anything. Christ did everything, and we, didn't, we, need, to come, we need to keep on living the same life. No, that's uh, another gospel that you have created. It's a doctrine that's it's antichrist. Because if Christ went to the horns of the altar, I have good news for your life today. You also have to take the decision to go and to grab hold of the horns of the altar. To his name. Gal Galatians 2.20, the word of God says, With Christ, I'm together crucified. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And what I live in, my, in the flesh, I, I live in the faith of the Son of God, who has loved me, who has given himself for me. How many, you give, how many of you give a great round of applause to the word of God? How strong is that word to understand that with Christ in Christ we were crucified with him. And by faith, as Paul said, we need to start to say, I no longer live, my, but Christ lives in me. Those are declarations, spiritual declarations that where we take hold of the horns of the, of the altar and we die voluntarily. And if Christ lives, truly lives in you. His character needs to manifest through you. Character of love and character that's confronting. Amen. Start declaring with your, with your mouth, Church of Christ, and those people that watch us through the nations with Christ. I'm crucified. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Open your mouth. To his name. It's time to go to the altar and take hold of the altar to go forward. How many want to go forward? To preach this message. God showed me visions that were important. In these times where many generals of God died to his presence. God 
let me see something. He let me see how the prayers go up of the holy to his presence. They go in, t in like smoke, but they go to a place in the third skies where there's an altar. I saw this in visions. They were like beams of visions. And the Lord said, these are times to go up for prayers to go up at the altars. Prayers of saints and their people who are willing to die for Jesus. To sacrifice themselves for Jesus. Blessed be the name of God. And the Lord also showed me like someone going up, grabbing hold of the horns. It's like it's a type going up and it was seemed like an exercise that they, you do in the um, in the gym and all those people that understand this this mysteries and they learn to take hold of the horns of the altars will go to another level and I and I and I give you a prophetic word to let go of for your people for our my people to go up in another level. God doesn't want you in the same level. He doesn't want you still. He wants to take you from glory to glory to power to power, from triumph to triumph. It's easier to go down than to go up. It's easier to go back than to go forward. That is why it's, it's going to be difficult but not impossible. And the Lord took me, me to Revelations chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 2 to 4. It says, I'm going to read it. And unto the angel of the church in the Sardis write, These things saint that he has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou has a name, that thou livest and art dead. This is strong. This was saying to a pastor, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Amen. We see here the Lord confronting the angel of the church sardis i'm gonna take a part where it says it's that thou has a name that thou livest and art dead this occult sin doesn't make you compatible with the internal that's why he calls us to sanctify ourselves spirit soul and body be found perfect for the coming of the Lord. Blessed is the one who washed your clothes. The one who's just, practice just, and the one who's holy. Keep on sanctifying yourself. You want to be compatible with the eternal. Sanctify yourself. Affirm in the verse 2 the things that are ready to die. Amen. What could be a, an angel, a pastor of a church, what does he need to a to a pastor, he's saying, affirm the things that are ready to die. Your works aren't perfect. You have names that you live, but you, you're dead. Repeat with me, distractions. Satan, if he knows that you have the armor of God, Satan, if he knows that you're a warrior, Satan, if he knows that you have a capacity as a servant, he's going to use other openness gaps in moments where you 
commit destruction in order to destroy you. Your time is valuable for God. Servant of God who are here, son of God who are here, servant that are watching me in the nations, your time, your time is worth, your time is valuable. That's why redeeming the time, you need to redeem the time. Amen. That's why we see that the Lord Jesus Christ is exhorting because there are things that you needed to affirm to die and that time as affirm is what the priest used to do in the bronze altar you needed to affirm he needed to affirm the animal to the cords he needed to tie him by the hands and the feet for not to escape but there are many times my loved Christians believers who are here I include I'm going to speak generally say with me all there's a time in, in there are many times that we need to let go of a character and attitude their situation and now it's not that Moses was going to go down and the, Moses is going to put those cords at the altar no you voluntarily you need to put you need to be willing to tie yourself to the horns of the altar not going out of the presence until the things that are not good before the eyes of God being removed. But sometimes we're like animals that weren't tied well. Do you understand? There's the moment that we, we, we need want to go out running. We, need to, we want to escape from the presence of Jesus Christ and that can be like that. How many of you say amen to the word? Revelations chapter 6 verse 9. We see here in the in the sixth seal of the Lamb, the altar starts revealing. That's in heavens. There are many. There are many doctrines. There are many people that say that there's a there's intercession. Only the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. But oh well, this this passage, we cannot give an opinion but it says in Revelation 6, 6 9 and when he had opened the fifth and when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held these are martyrs these were preachers, men of God. We see here in the message of Pergamos, Antipas, for example, a martyr. It means, his name means the preacher that goes forward. Nobody wants to have an Antipas as a pastor because the preacher that preaches only truth and he goes. And they say Antipas was, was assassin where, where the devil lives. But that's another topic. And it says that, and they, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and average our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And on 9, it's interesting what it says. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the altar started to reveal that's in the heavens where were the where were the martyrs the people that died because they preached the word of God say they were under the altar amen they were under the altar that's where the Apostle Paul is if you ask me where's the Apostle Paul now he's under the altar he was assassinated by, because of the word. Where's Peter? He's under the altar. And they claim. And they cry with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does not judge and average our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And it says in 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet, Yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren 
that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. All the prophets are there under the altar. The great man of God that showed a life of sacrifice, TB Joshua is there. Amen. We say under the altar, how precious, how marvelous that if you die, may it be because of, of Christ as someone that preaches the word of God. Even though you're persecuted, even though they throw rocks at you, start preaching, keep preaching, open your mouth in the name of Jesus. Because for you, the dying is, is winning and being with the Lord. And you, this preach is going under that altar because it's a preach that was processed. Apostle, you with what authority do you preach? Ask God. The persecutions, the fasting, ask God. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, give, give me the shoes of that apostle for one week. I want to experience where from where does this preach come from? Ask Jesus Christ. Amen? I come to prophesy to you that you're going to enter dimensions where you're going to love the process of the life than the results rather than the, the results. How many of you say amen? Because the results are temporary, but your, your processes are under, the, are under the altar. How many of you say amen? Give a great round of applause to the Lord. Okay. In Revelations 8, 1 to 8, the figure of the altar keeps on appearing. And when he opened the seventh seal, then th there was a silence in heaven. Look what... John is saying here are things are heavenly things not of the second not of the earth or under the earth it's things of heavens in about the space of half an hour and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were giving seven trumpets and another angel came and stood at the altar say the altar having a golden censer, and there was giving unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Where's the golden altar? Before the throne. What's before the throne? The altar. Why you then change the term altar to a platform? Where did that thing come from? The Church of Christ was called to bring the designs of heavens here on earth. The Lord told his disciples, you're going to pray like this. Come, your kingdom come, your will be done. And if we speak of the kingdom, we speak of design. Before the throne, there's an altar. How many of you say amen? Not a platform. How many of you say amen? Over the platform is Jezebel. Over the altar is the man of process and woman of God. Amen? Are you learning? Alleluia. The, the Spirit of God is moving. Now it says, and the angel took the censer and filled with fire of the altar and cast it into earth and there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense your prayer petitions what do you do your prayer requests what do you do through prophetic impact your prayer requests, why do you do that? Why do you give your prayers? 
Why? Because there's an altar here and you know, you know and you understand that this altar is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you send your prayer requests, your prayer requests, those prayers go to the golden censer that's on the altar. And then it's accomplished. And five accomplishes and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire and of the altar and cast it into the earth and there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake that means that there's the response of your question of your prayers because the people that suffer as a soldier of Jesus Christ people that go through process people that that so with tears are accumulated and there's a time where the father says the answer is sin and there's altars there's earthquakes there's thunders you cannot you will have to go through the manifestations of God when God answers to his name who lives hallelujah Serving God, no, serving God, even though there are circumstances, even go, Isaiah says, even go, you go through the waters, the fire, the fire is not to complain, it's not to gossip, it's not the, that the waters and the fire is to, in order to pray. I know people that are going through economical problems people that maybe are going to commit divorce but as the last resource came today to the house of the Lord as the la last option and I come to say take hold of the horns of the altar do not take hold of the horns of the devil there outside because you're not going to receive anything but you're gonna but if you take the hold of the altar that's in the house of the Lord Bless his name, the things are going to change in your life. They're going to be transformed. Your home, your economy, your family, your business. God is going to bring you creative ideas. How many of you say amen? Hallelujah. Psalms 118. There's the key. Psalms 118. There's the key. 27. Jehovah is God and he has given light. Light means revelation. Revelation it means. God is the Lord which has sworn us light bind the sacrifice with cords even unto the horns of the altar. He is light. He is soft. He is revelation. Tying victims at the altar. Who are the victims? It's you. I am the one who is going to go starting from today to the horns of the altar. Even though it hurts, even though it's hard. Okay. Revelations chapter 5, verse 6. Now I want to cut the preach, but a greater strength says to me, I had need to get to unleash the, the last word. Do you think that it's easy to stand here? My brother, you don't imagine the pressure that, that's here, that's before you. Amen. Amen. But say with me, tying victims to the, whole, to the horns of the altar. And we cannot escape from our responsibility. Dying and say, Revelations chapter 5, verse 6. Verse 6, and the word says, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, repeat, a lamb, as it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all this earth. 
put the drawing there. The lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. I want to show you if we have a figure there, Pastor Junior. I'm going to, after that, I'm going to close because the horns of the altar nowadays, say with me, are in Jesus Christ. Are before the throne of God, are in Jesus Christ. Here John sees a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. Imagine. Hallelujah. There, there it is. See, look what John sees. You can see it. A lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. Leave it there. That is the vision that John had. Say with me, seven horns. There's revelation of God there. When John saw this vision, he was indicating that the lamb, the lamb is Jesus Christ that was killed. It was his work at the cross. John is speaking that in the lamb, in, in Jesus Christ that was killed at the cross were the seven horns of the altar. The seven horns of the altar and the seven eyes those seven eyes, I let you go. That means the seven spears of God that Isaiah saw. Isaiah saw in the chapter 11. The seven spirit of God, those eyes, each eye represents a revelation. Spirit of power, spirit of advice, spirit of, Je of Jehovah. But we're not going to speak of the eyes. We're going to speak of the seven horns that Jesus has. Starting from today, I'm going to... Get hold of those horns of the altar, and I'm going to go hold forward. Do you want to be the same, the same person, or do you want to go forward? Do you, do you want to be an important person in life? Do you want to tomorrow, by faith and prophetically, someone call you and say, "I have a a, a new job position for you," because it says that they're going to call you, that unknown person are going to call you because of your God and you want that to happen, then you need to get hold of the horns of the altar. Everyone wants to succeed. Everyone wants the key to succeed. Everyone wants the mega temple where the pastor sp speaks of succeeding. Everyone wants to go forward, but I have good news. You're never gonna prosper if you don't have the key number one that's called obedience. How many of you say amen? to his name in order to reach these horns you will need to obey amen you want authority put yourself under authority amen say with me seven horns the verse 12 of chapter 5 read it and I saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb here john hears the the sounds of the living creatures and the 24 elders and everything everything that was in the heavens worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power first horn power repeat how many how many horns does it have? Seven. The first horn, say with me, it's the power. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, all authority is given to me on earth and over earth and under earth. Paul said that that authority, the Lord gave to the church. The church is the visible head of here on earth the visible head of Christ. And I don't believe that Christ isn't going to come with a weak. Jesus isn't com coming for a weak church, a church that doesn't go forward, a church that doesn't hit, a religious church, a church that's Pentecostal. I don't believe in that. I believe that Jesus Christ comes for a church of kingdom. How many of you say amen? A church that prays, that fasts, that searches for God, that sacrifices him. And it takes hold of the horns of the power. 
Amen? Say with me, power. Who did God give to the church? There's the power. Why do you need the power? Why do you need it? The economic power. In order to help the apostle to do great crusades. Are you understanding? We need stadiums by the great the great harvest that's coming minimum in the Chaco minimum the Veles, the stadium of Boca Junior there there's money there's p economic power and where is that going to come out of look at your neighbor from you the, who has understand who has understood this revelation. I'm going to pay the greatest crusades, evangelistic crusades for God, because the one who comes to Christ, listen to me, comes from under and goes up. The one that didn't have job, God opens the doors because God starts revealing what it is, the, what the power is, the word of God. And he gives you the power to make riches. To go forward. You need. You need. Amen. One example I give you. You want the best thing for your children or you want the worst for your children. You want to be a father, a great father for your child. What do you need? Power. Repeat. Who's worthy of receiving the power? You need power in order to remove Satan from your home. Power of the blood of Jesus. Power of the unction. Look, my brother, that Satan doesn't obey to any, just any, to any prayer. Only to the prayers of people who have been revealed. What does John say? John says that he saw the first horn of the lamb and we need to get hold of the horn. Number two, riches. Ah, yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say the riches. And it says, and wisdom. You want to preach like this apostle. You want to preach like this. Right? I know that it's not by, by just a joke. That more than 22 nations connect every Sunday. Because they hear a rabbi of war. They hear a man of God that have re has revelation. Say, wisdom. Where does the wisdom come from? What the, where do the elders the men, by taking hold of the horn of wisdom. I don't understand the Bible. I don't understand. I don't know how to read. I'm a person that my studies are questionable. I just went to high school. It's very questionable. Do you understand me? But the wisdom that God has given for his honor and glory, it's not questionable. And I'm going to tell you something. You see that the press attacks me, and they, uh, but they attack what they don't understand. And you know why do they understand? Because they catch it, their, it catches their attention. You know what happened when Jesus entered those the cities, where did this man come from? His word has something. His word has something. Say with me, wisdom. wisdom. Repeat, wisdom. Get hold. I don't know how to write, Pastor. I, I didn't know how to write as well. I didn't know how to read as well. Amen? I don't know how to read, Pastor. I have... So you're going to take, you're going to 
buy a Bible and a no notebook for faith. By faith, you're going to take a pen. You're going to get on your knees and you say, I take hold of the horn of the wisdom. And you're going to start reading the Bible. And the word of God is going to take life. Amen. Apostle, are you a theologist? Apostle, you study in a university. No, from not a, not a school in heaven, in, in, on earth, but in heaven. Because the word of God says that there is a power of wisdom. Take it, take it, take it, take it, my loved ones. I'm imparting, take it. There are lawyers, there are businessmen, there are people here. There are lawyers. There are people that have their certificate, but they don't know how to be a lawyer. Why? Because you need the wisdom. And there's pastors. There are pastors. The, in, it's, the biblical institute is gonna, isn't going to give you pastorship. The Lord Jesus Christ gives you this. I give you an example. It's impressive the, the, the level of pastor as the Apostle Oscar and the Prophet Esther is. Wisdom and excellence. Say with me, wisdom. Take that, take that. Number four, the word of God says, with this I'm closing up. It's the famous of the preachers. And it's power and riches and wisdom and strength. It's another horn. You need to go up and you need to take hold of the horns of the strength during the morning. Life isn't easy. I put it as an exa example, two months, an ACV, she didn't, she couldn't speak on the third day, she was at the altar letting go of the word. How do you explain that? Say with me, strength. From heavens. When you take hold of strength, God gives you the strength that's not from this world. The devil hit you on your face, and that strength makes your face straighten. I tell you something. I encountered many demons this week that I got up and my, and my wife said, what did happen to you? You went to the ring to fight. Yes, I was a fighter in my old times. What happened? They hit your face. And I was encountering Satan. I was facing Satan. And I was worried that the, that the bruise didn't go down. And say with me, strength, strength. And you know, when I started to claim... Do you believe that you're not going to, you in this, in this fight, you're going to receive in this fight from night to day, you're going to be good. And suddenly the, the phone is going to ring and they're going to say that person that you mostly love died. Amen. And that's where we need to have this understanding that we have a strength that's from high from above that the and it's not the the doctors that can give you the medicine i know those people that are weak that are going to physical problems here and the lord says i have for you the strength but today you need to take hold of the altars of the horns of the altar that's strength to his name Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The honor. The honor is another. The glory and the blessing. There are three final horns. That's why there are seven horns. 
You cannot give what you don't have. You need to give what you have. If you never honored in life, you cannot honor God. To you be the honor. You're saying, what you received, I give you. Amen. This promotion, say promotion. The word promotion means fame and it means glory. Amen. The word says that after 40 days of fasting, Jesus came out in the power of the spirit and his fame was extended. In Deuteronomy, it says that the Lord told his people, I'm going to extend your fame. Say with me, a bit of the glory of God over a human being in order to overcome. May it be in your career, in the ministry, in a political charge or whatever. May it be. Remember that Satan also gives glory and fame, but that's, that's a lie. But what does the man of God of God you have to say God I give you glory God I give you honor Lord I give you what does it say in Proverbs the woman who fears Jehovah Yahweh he's go, she's going to be worshipped raise your hands and get to your feet Raise your hands. Say, Holy Spirit, thank you for this powerful word. It has, I have fed, I've been instructed. I ask you in the name of Jesus to give me that courage to take hold of the horns of the altar. I present myself as a living sacrifice for this word. I value, I value much more, much more the work of yours, Jesus Christ, in the cross of Calvary and also the work of all those that preach your word your prophets, your apostles, your pastors, your servants that suffer penalties. I value, I respect, I honor them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for you to help me to tie myself to the horns of the altar because I recognize that I'm not perfect, that my works aren't perfect, that I have a lot to improve, that I have a lot to change. I recognize that there are things that I have put limits that, I, that the faith hasn't reached to believe you, that you are the owner of the whole universe. What's for you to raise me, to lift me? What's, what it is, is it for you to take me forward, to lift my family? Sorry for my unbelief. Sorry for my unbelief. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus to fill me with your strength, your power, with your Holy Spirit in this place, with your healings in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, Fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me. Start claiming for, for your, his wholeness. Say thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Take the seat for a moment. People who are watching me, 
through the internet start connecting now in this ministry of glory the glory of god is going to reach your home it's going to reach your home i said before that the lord saw me a garment that people w fell to the ground fell to the ground and i heard the lord say weight of glory weight of glory a weight of glory and that's where the weight of glory tribulation and I'm gonna let go of a prophetic word and minister comes son the Lord showed me in dreams the storms that you were going through they were heavy storms <laughs> 